Hello, my name is Muhammad Ali, and uh, I will be discussing the absurdity of existence and trying to define normal within a modern context. Uh, to begin, I'd, I'd like to imagine yourself 40,000 years ago, a long time ago, I know, but 40,000 years ago, you're in Northern Europe during the spring. Um, the winter snows have ended and the moisture from the slowly melting permafrost beneath your leather boots leaves a chill in your bones. Uh, the wind is biting, although the sun shines warmly, and you're surrounded by your tribesmen, uh, following a mammoth herd, trying to find enough food for yourself for the coming month. Through a hunt that spans days, tracking, stalking, and eventually killing a few of the beasts, you haul your food back to the campsite where the tribe will live for the coming weeks before moving again, continuously following the wandering herd of deer, mammoth, and buffalo. This is how your parents lived. This is how their parents lived, how your children and their children will live. And this is how you live because this is all you know. That is until one day where you realize that by growing certain plant species, you can vastly, vastly increase the amount of food that you can cultivate. This means that you and your tribe will also be able to support more people. You'll be able to support more children. If other wandering bands come near you, you will be able to support them as well. To optimize the amount of food you grow, you create tools. And to optimize the amount of food that you can keep count of, you create organizations to organize the farmers. To organize those, you create organizations that organize the organizers of the farmers and continue adding to this chain and eventually, congratulations, you've made a society. Very rudimental, of course, but a society. Are there other societies out there? Maybe with different philosophies on life, different politics, different leaders, different rulers, different gods? Well, I'm sorry, but you have to defeat them or your way of life will perish. Create weapons and shields, defense systems and offensive systems, strategies based on the tactics of your forefathers. Continue this for thousands of years and empires are born. The Persians, the Egyptians, the Mayans, the Inca, the Greek, the Chinese, Muslims, French, British, Spanish, and Dutch all wanting to impose their theories of what was best for humankind on the world. Then came the Industrial Revolution, and mankind became slaves. Not to each other, but to machine masters. Free from work, we had no idea what to do with our free time. So we invented space travel. We invented the internet. We invented computers, and we invented tiny little rectangles that contain the entire summation of human knowledge in our pockets. Taking all of that into account, I would, I'd, I'd like to ask you one question. Would a caveman know how to play Angry Bird? Probably not, and that's a strange question because it has an obvious answer. If I, if I, if I time traveled 40,000 years in the past and I handed a caveman, a tiny rectangle with a moving screen where you could drag an icon and it would shoot across the screen, killing a little green pig in a house made of wood and glass. He would be, firstly, absolutely confused as to what the purpose of such a thing would be, and secondly, absolutely confused as to what the purpose of such a thing would be. Because to a caveman, what is a phone? It serves no purpose. It doesn't help with killing enemies, it doesn't help with killing mammoths, it doesn't help defending the tribe, and it doesn't provide anything to value, so why would you need it? To a caveman, a, for a phone is uh, completely useless. Yet to me, it's, it's, it's something that I pick up and use daily, hourly even. It is the most normal part of my existence. A similar example can be taken by a 14th century peasant. If I went back in time and I handed that peasant a Dorito chip, they would taste 
more flavor in that one chip than they would have ever experienced in their entire lives. That's a crazy thought, yet to me, I can, I can maybe take a five minute walk down to my local grocery store and pick up a bag of Doritos anytime I want. So what is, what is the similarity between me and the caveman? Between the caveman and the peasant and between the peasant and me? Besides all being human, of course, the one commonality between all of us is that we change. That is the one thing that marks the entirety of human existence is that we constantly innovate. We constantly bring in new ideas to help, to help better ourselves. Now, Cases could be made that modern existence is, is, is something that is absolutely and utterly regrettable. Warfare has acceded to new types and forms never before seen, but to be true, nobody knew was, what a phalanx was until, until the Greeks invented it. Phones and, and, and computers have distracted us to an extent that we've never seen before causing mental health issues and problems on societal scales. A study conducted by the NIH found that one in five Americans, one in five, have some form of mental illness. Now, pre-industrial revolution levels were significantly lower, but then again, Pre-industrial revolution toilets were pretty bad. Not going to lie. So, although, although we might be extremely depressed and, and fidgety and worried about things that we have no reason to worry about, at least we have toilets. Then again, I've, I've never heard of a depressed Mongolian. Um... Another, stundu- another study conducted by Harvard found that the, 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 the levels of, of depression or mental illness in general in Mongolia were extremely low. Extremely low. Now, this could be because of their nomadic lifestyle. This could be that the majority of the time they spend in that country is, well, spent herding animals, milking goats. Making cheese sounds like a like a like a fun life. The difference between I feel the majority of us raised in the West or educated and 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 westernized countries is that we have a prevailing sense of a lack of purpose, and that ultimately is the abnormality of our existence. Never before and never on such a widespread scale have we seen the amount of people who feel lost, who feel alone, who feel troubled, who feel like they don't have a path to walk because in all fairness, there probably is none. The caveman knew what he had to do. And so did the peasant. But there are so many different options to choose from for us. There are so many avenues and routes that we can take that, simply put, just weren't available any, to, to anyone before us. And that has left us very, very angry. That's left us extremely upset because... We don't know what to do. Sure, yeah, you can go and become a doctor. and That'll make you enough money. To live comfortably, get a house in the Hollywood Hills, maybe go on vacation to Bora Bora every other week, that's fine. But are you satisfied? Sure, you can become an accountant, live in a small apartment outside Brooklyn. Maybe have have a new gaming console that you and your buddies play every weekend. That's great, but are you content? 
the realization that there is more to life than whatever materialistic things have been granted to us is utterly shocking because we were taught that getting these things would make us happy and we're just not happy. And that's not normal. To, 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 to take into account differing perspectives, Darwin's theories of natural selection and evolution state that the only reason that any species of animal exists is to try to reproduce. It's to try to, pro it's, it's, it's to, to, try to forward the best genes of the current generation to the next one to, to, to optimize the success of that species reproducing again in the future. Now, obviously, I think we can conclude that most of us have more to life than just reproducing. Because we don't just want to have babies. We want to be happy. And sure, for some people, that, that can mean having babies, but more than that. To quote, to quote a great movie, um, our great war is a spiritual one. Our, our great depression is our lives. Me, me personally, I, I, I've, I've, I've spent hours constantly scrolling through useless memes on Instagram or looking at updates on Snapchat or, or trying to find videos to watch on YouTube when I could be thinking about how weird it is to be alive, how fundamentally crazy that is. And, and, and that lack of focus on frankly put, ourselves in general, has created an extremely negative mindset within humankind as a whole. Because we weren't born to be this way. We weren't born to have attention spans that last 15 seconds. We weren't born to have our thumbs constantly scrolling upwards, slowly and slowly, until our muscles get weak. We were created to have fun, to, to maximize the dopamine output because that demonstrates that we would be the most fit to continue on our species. And we're just not seeing that anymore. Frankly put, humankind is grinding to a standstill. Our logic is profound because we've innovated basically as far as we can at this point, given our current technological status. And yet, we're just not satisfied. That dissatisfaction with our life is truly the most riveting thing, I feel, about our existence because if we are dissatisfied, then what's the point? Because an ant lives in an anthill. That's, that's what he does. Maybe he goes outside, he cuts up some leaves, maybe he defends it from a couple other bugs. That's great. That's what an ant does. To the universe, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I do at all. To the universe, I'm just an infinitely small speck of dust on an infinitely small speck planet in an infinitely small solar system orbiting a completely well to its scale small star it's indifferent to me and that's normal for the universe just as living in an ant hill is normal to an ant but both the universe and the ant aren't blessed with one gift that we all have 
sure you can you can you can look up at the stars and you can feel puny compared to them it's something that's really easy to feel because i felt it but it's important after taking that into the account that you also have something that not even the greatest stars have you can look upon the universe and you can see its beauty you can see trillions of stars and galaxies gust clouds spiraling away from us asteroids and planets just as equally large and beautiful as our own and sure you can feel small you can feel infinitely small but you have to remember that you must also feel important because sure you're dust you live 70 80 90 maybe 100 years and then you're gone you may you'll maybe be remembered by your grandchildren a couple dozen maybe a century down the line and then you'll be forgotten but but you are alive you are something as equally as important as any star as any galaxy and as any ant any leaf on any tree any speck of water in the ocean you are the universe and the universe is you and as cheesy as i know that may sound it's true so what is normal? Well, I don't know. I'm still figuring that out. And I hope you figure it out too. But to any extent, normal is whatever you decided to be. However deep you want to look inside yourself, however you want to find your purpose, that is normal. Normal is what you make of it. Thank you.